the U.S. Navy has begun deploying the new AIM-174 air-to-air missile in its F-18EF Super Hornet fighter squadrons. These jets are the backbone of the Navy's carrier fleet. The AIM-174 made its overseas debut at Exercise Rim of the Pacific 2024. This missile is an air-launch derivative of the SM-6 anti-ballistic missile used by the Navy's Arleigh Burke-class destroyers. The AIM-174 is a significant development, providing the U.S. Navy with an equivalent to the Russian R-37M and Chinese PLXX missiles. These foreign missiles are primarily used by MiG-31BM interceptors and J-16 fighters. The exact range of the AIM-174 is still uncertain, but Western sources estimate it to be between 400 and 450 kilometers. This range is more than double that of the previously relied upon AIM-120D which had a maximum range of 160 to 180 kilometers. Oversized, very long-range air-to-air -air missiles like the AIM-174 are especially valuable against large, maneuverable enemy aircraft with high radar cross-sections. This includes targets such as airborne early warning and control systems, aerial tankers, and bombers. The U.S. Navy had a similar missile, the AIM-54 Phoenix, introduced in 1974, primarily for defending carrier strike groups against Soviet bombers. However, its performance was less than satisfactory in engagements with Iraqi aircraft. Improvements in targeting technologies and missile design have made oversized missiles effective against fighter-sized targets as well. The Russian Air Force's successful use of the R-37M over Ukraine is a testament to this. China's development of the PLXX, the world's longest-ranged air-to-air missile, and its expansion of bomber, tanker, and early warning aircraft fleets have pushed the U.S. Navy and Air Force to develop their own long-range missiles to close the gap. There had been speculation about an air-launched SM-6 variant, especially after an F-18F was photographed in 2021 carrying an inert SM-6 without its first stage booster. Despite the SM-6 entering service in 2013, it's believed that an air-launched variant was always part of the plan. However, questions remain about how well the AIM-174 can compete with the Russian and Chinese missiles. Air-launched derivatives of surface-to-air missiles have historically performed worse than those designed as air-to-air -air missiles from the start, like the R-37M and PLXX. Additionally, the F-18EF is much smaller than the MiG-31BM and J-16, which means it has smaller radars and carries less weight. The F-18EF's ability to loiter with these oversized missiles and launch them effectively is therefore limited compared to these larger aircraft. This was recently demonstrated over Ukraine. The Russian Su-35, with its smaller radar and lower operational altitude, couldn't use the R-37M as effectively as the MiG-31. The missiles didn't travel as far, fewer could be carried per sortie, and the Su-35 needed targeting data from airborne early warning aircraft to engage distant targets. The F-18EF will face similar limitations compared to the J-16 and especially the MiG-31. The F-18EF wasn't designed for very long-range air-to-air engagements, unlike the F-14 or the MiG-31. Its smaller airframe limits its carrying capacity and radar size. So, while the AIM-174 is a groundbreaking development for American carrier aviation, it is unlikely to fully bridge the missile gap with Chinese and Russian aviation unless used by larger, better-optimized aircraft. 